Hey, hey, welcome again. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Cardboard Conversations. As always, hanging out here on Cardboard Odysseys. That's right, it's Saturday at 7 p.m. And thank you, Bob, and thank you, everybody out there, for joining me this evening. Hey, glad to be here, man. I mean, it's a, it, it's, it's a good day uh, and a good oh, week, yeah. actually. I think overall, um, at least for Magic the Gathering, in my opinion, Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are enjoying today. I think there's one person in particular that's not enjoying today. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we got to say goodbye to uh, a longtime enemy. It seems as though we've put a nemesis in the bin. Goodbye, Cynthia Williams, you know. Uh, there's a yeah. That, I mean, that's a whole. Wow. That's a rabbit hole to jump down that goes. Oh. Yeah. Deeper than I'm even willing to get into, you know, all the speculation. Uh, mm. If you've watched some of the other content creators like uh, Josh from uh, what was a hometown TCG, hometown TCG channel. there, yeah, and then and then you have uh, Perp over on on uh, or as we were lovingly refer, refer to him in our house as Sweary Guy. Um, <laughs> His life get a bit unrated. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, they're they're a bit ranty. If you think I rant, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm going to temper that with going to one of his lives. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the historian, you know, did a speculation piece. It was actually pretty. That's actually where I saw it. So, I mean, probably, you know, as much as I don't care for him personally, uh, you got to admit the guy does put out some. Yeah, you very know, good content. he's on the ball. Yeah. He's he's well thought out, if a bit overboard on just how bad Magic 30. I'm still trying to yeah. figure out how Magic 30, <laughs> like, really just. Yeah. Crush the soul of Magic the Gathering. That's that's something I'll give him. Um, you know, as hyperbolic as he can be, uh, he's definitely a a bit of a hypester. You know, it's always uh, the sky seems to be falling, but at the same time, he's got his finger on the pulse. He's probably he, the he number one speed as far as getting information out, and it. I, it I'll is, be, you know, I'll, I'll be quite. Frank, there's a lot of content creator that, cr content creators out there when I watch, and I, I try to watch a lot of them to get broad views. Understand. Uh, many of them, I have no idea what the point is, what they were trying to express after I'm done, what, you know, spending that however yeah. long I spend with them, going, what the hell were they trying to say? Right, yeah. But, but you know, at least at least the historian, it does a great job of, whether I agree with it or not, expressing an opinion. Um, right and, and yeah. putting things together so he's very clear with what the message is he's trying to say mm -hmm. so i'll give him that um and, and you're right rudy? he is I... very prompt with news yeah rudy he'll take a week to get around to something and then he'll take 20 minutes to actually say his point on something you know it's and it, often it's i'll be honest with you more... i'm not even clear oftentimes with rudy like mm. okay what 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 was he saying besides trying to meme all over something? Yeah, and I mean that's in in particular, you know, um, that that's one of the things that's kind of made me shy away a little bit more from Rudy is the the whole Taco Man aspect and how many layers of guys there are over the actual information or what he's trying to convey to people, and you know that's I, I need a bit more pointed um presenters as far as that stuff goes nowadays and he's always trying to sell something don't get me wrong you know everybody is uh trying to sell some fallout collector packs so i can't say that you know i'm guilt free here either but uh, that's his I whole just wanna, real quick before we go down any more rabbit holes just say hello to the people in the audience hey solar god and mr uh i guess mr hillbilly's there too but hello mrs hillbilly um i didn't i didn't know we were going to get into like critique other youtube content creators yeah. kind of segment here <laughs> Um, Happy and, 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 everybody. Yes. Miss Sherry Vegas, you know, often warns me you shouldn't talk about other people on your show. I'm like, well, I can't help it. <laughs> it it's it, it's relevant, and you got to talk about the big guys because if you're talking about some esoteric channel that nobody watches, they're not going to know what you're talking about. But um, yeah. and I don't want to sit and bash Rudy. I'll just say that that tactic of of throwing memes and the taco and floppy tacos and all the you know girl in the dress, what that does is it tends to mask when uh when you're not there for accuracy right it does it masks the message so that if anybody calls you out it's a way for him to slip and slide out from underneath whatever he says because I'll, I'll see him take you know 
every angle. Like he was talking about this with Cynthia Williams. See, I told you this was going to happen, yet he was Mr. Pump and Dump. And it's like, well, where, where do you stand on Magic, Rudy? Is it in a great spot or is it in a terrible yeah. spot? So, like, that was that was sort of the big thing with him this week about Cynthia. I'm like, wow, you're a gutless flip-flopper. <laughs> I think everybody well, knows know, exactly that, where you know, I stand. Uh, let me pose that question to you, Bob. Do yeah. you think right now, as of the recent changes with some of the the staffing at the head of the company, do you think that Magic is in a better spot now than it was one month ago? Uh, you know, I, I I sat down and rattled off for probably an hour to Miss Sherry Vegas discussing that very topic and 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 that very specific question. So I put a great deal of thought into it. Mm. Um, and the short answer is potentially, right? So I won't say that they are. I won't say that they aren't. Time will will tell us. You know, by her own admission, like the only reason I don't didn't like her right from the outset is less than a year into the job. And she was telling us that it's a bad thing if the box prices go up after launch or saying, you know, just absolute nonsense about a product mm. and really shook my faith in her. And this is all in the fireside chat. You all can go look it up if you have a transcript of it. It's, it's out there. I think we even posted a link at one point in time mm -hmm. that she said that, well, reprinting cards doesn't necessarily affect the secondary market value of them. Like, just like she said, many things affect the price of secondary markets, uh, front cards. And I'm like... Hmm. go away just like just it, shut up it, it like, that's okay. so yes, they do, like... but she was basically alluding to the fact that all these reprints which are just lining their pockets by pushing boxes is hmm. not pushing down the price of the secondary market and your collectibles like hmm. that's just ignorance right that's just a terrible line to take um yeah she i think that there were some very base things about the game itself and how the the general release purchase uh sealed box movement and collecting how different that is than most other things in general i mean that's yes. not how golf clubs work that's not no. how slippers work so it's it's very different than most other things i think one of the few comparable other things would be like shoe collecting you know if you're a sneakerhead, there's a chance that those air jordans go up because they were super limited from the 2010s or something outside of that you know coming from philip morris and amazon how she was selling products and was so different and um i think that that just translated so poorly over into magic the gathering and the the consumerism in her previous positions paid off but in magic i think it was probably one of the worst time periods as, as far as for me it was hard to stay in with mtg even though i was a content creator over the last two years it was definitely tumultuous to say the very least it was a lot of bumpy road to get through and like you said i'm tentatively pleased with some of the changes don't get me wrong they could put just another corporate stooge in charge for sure, sure. but there is also a chance that they actually put somebody who knows the game that is more community driven than just profit driven which i don't have a lot of hopes for because just saying that out loud why would a company that recently made a billion dollars in a year want someone who's more community driven oh, instead see, now of you're, you're, you're trying to drag me down the rabbit hole i said i wasn't <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if everybody wants to hear so let's just backfill people for a moment here for anybody in the audience who isn't aware of the picture behind me that is Miss Cynthia Williams, and she's actually still the the president of of Wizards of the Coast, and I think her title also said in Hasbro Gaming, whatever the hell that's supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, she resigned. She turned in her resignation last uh, this this past Monday, and she will be uh, leaving the position as of next Friday, the twenty sixth. Mm. Um, now, there was no other information given. So that leads a lot of speculation as to why. And it's very, very suspicious timing mm. being that the quarterly report, revenue report <laughs> of, of Magic is Gathering coming right up, is, yeah. is coming out tomorrow on the 21st. Mm. So, you know, uh, I'll be going through that and I'll be giving you my opinions as usual on quarterly earnings reports um, at some point here in the near future. But it takes me a little bit to dig through that corporate gobbledygook and and you know basically it's a spreadsheet for wall street not not for the magic consumers um 
uh, again, like I said, it could be good. It could be bad. We have no idea what she was doing behind the scenes. And I think that all lends itself to my big complaint about uh, the lack of transparency. And I will hold her personally accountable for that. Like, I'm not going to throw Magic 30 at her feet. You know, I'm sure that was in the works long before she got there. Mm -hmm. um, the the business model that is the chug -a lug billion dollars. And 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 there was somebody, I think it was Brody, that was showing the the, the chart of Hasbro earnings that has already peaked and it's already on its way down. Uh, now, that includes other games and other IPs that she's not in charge of and responsible for. And that just Magic itself, if you look at it in the silo, is holding firm, I guess you could say. But that's an awfully big ship to to steer, right? So changing direction to that company, uh, you know, for her short tenure, she only got there in February 2022. So she was there just a little bit over two years. Um, you know, I'm not going to attribute a lot to her. Uh, the only thing I'm going to attribute directly to her, uh, number one, is what came out of her face during the fireside chat, which was extremely concerning to me. Uh, number two, that she pretty much did nothing spectacularly identifiable to herself. It's the same formula that Chris Cox was, mm. was using and developed. And she just, you know, sat in the driver's seat holding the wheel steady, um, so to speak on the same exact course that he had plotted, which is very bad in my opinion for the long-term health of magic, the gathering. And it was great for a moment before we all put the pieces together. Well, and I think and the change in sales is probably reflected of that as well is uh, the, the enthusiasm yeah. and care like there. Hey, what's up guys. We got some of our uh, channel. Yeah. Member Richie, here, time there. Yeah. yeah. Time I mean, just some of the things that came out of her mouth are just like, so, so bad, like personally condemning that just broke me. You guys know this. I was like, Oh man, we're in for a rough haul. And I said, we're going to need, you know, a change of like uh, when people were asking me and people you've asked me like, okay, how do they fix it? Right? Well, this is part of one piece of what can potentially start shifting things in a different Absolutely. direction. Yeah. Changing of the guard is definitely good. I think needed change in magic, the gathering it, for, for a while. I think that, we needed change during the time period that Cynthia Williams was in charge. I just don't think we needed the change that she seems to have instilled. The things that happened. I, I don't know that she there. changed anything. Like, what did she change? We were right. on the path yeah. that, that on, on the, the only book, thing that changed drastically. Yeah. The only thing that changed drastically during her period was the ramping up of reprints and the absolute just full body, you know, cannonball into the deep end of, of other IPs, right? Mm. So the only thing that I can identify by her specifically was stepping on the gas of things that Chris Cox had, you know, tiptoed into um, where he was tiptoeing a little bit more into reprinting. Mm. She just like wide open throttle on that baby. And, you know, the variants and the just oof, more, yeah, more skews, I guess you could say. But I mean, he had started that ball rolling, right? We know that started earlier back in 2019 2020 with the you know collectors packs and set boxes and universes beyond uh that was prior to her regime she just stepped on you know turned all those those volume knobs up to 10 uh during her tenure mm -hmm. so that's sort of her legacy with magic which was thankfully a short two years um, all yeah, of them have going to be, the, you know, a vacant no spot for a while. And then we'll see who's going to replace her. And again, I think like you, you know, alluded to a bit here is how slow the machine of Wizards of the Coast changes. And it will probably be a few years after someone else comes in and replaces in this position before we see any actual personalized change, you know, something that is specific to that that tenure that will be good or bad again and i think that's unfortunately I, I, i'm gonna say this like the corporation the i work comes, for yeah the person I, that comes in unless they you know sort of as a condition of their taking the position stipulate some things they're not going to slow down the printing they're not going to slow down yeah, the reprinting exactly. they cannot get off this track that they're currently on right and not upset the apple cart even more right yeah yeah. Um, if we went back to the single draft box with, you know, 
very rare chase cards and all that, the, the community be up in arms. Um, and the problem with that is, is that we already know that that's about a $300 million model. If you extrapolated it out, going up about $5 million a year over the last five years, it's only an extra $25 million. It'd still be around a $350 million a year company instead of nearly a billion. The only thing that's going to make them scale back is when we make them scale back. And what that means is that we stop buying boxes for a very long period of time. Hmm. Right? That, that's what it'll come to. It, it'll be their arm being twisted behind their back because they've opened Pandora's box. And there is no going back, right? They, they can't. Yeah. Not at this point. They they are beholden to this holding, propping up, right, Richie, it has to crash, um, in order to force them to not lose it. And that's only if they care not to lose it. I think they're just going to keep the, you know, the gas pedal pressed until it runs out of gas. Hmm. Like, no matter who they put in that spot, because they're going to be expected to keep yeah. it at a billion-dollar level. And I'll bet you she knows yeah. that's just not a sustainable thing. Yeah, I, I think that the leadership in different companies is so starkly different and uh this is a great time to transition on that point as we're seeing a lot of ups and downs in magic the gathering we're seeing a lot of recent changes as well in lorcana we're seeing a lot of huge movements in their product lines as well and it doesn't seem as though that's that correlates to any of their leadership maybe outside of the possibility of reprinting, but they're also just as unclear about some of that stuff as other companies are. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because uh, I was looking into that issue this week. So, you know, I've been tracking the prices of Lorcana um, for quite some time. And um, one of the things that's the scuttlebutt this week, for those of you that aren't out there looking um, hey, what up, Toasty? Since there I is rumor so about about um, Lorcana reprinting the first chapter again, which, as you as you're showing here on the screen, um, the the prices. Oh, I'm showing on the screen now. The prices that the Pat was just showing have basically tanked for the first chapter. Uh, that's what I consider like a you know thirty percent loss in 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 a week. Um. So getting down to where the reprint and the only thing that I could find, and I could be wrong, maybe I'm missing it, but I saw one of them was uh, pointing to this article, uh, just so that you all are aware who this is. This is, uh, uh, I don't know how you say it, Stefane Stifa Mahdi. Uh, he is the CEO of North America Ravensburger. So he's the one that's responsible for reprints here in the United States. Um, and this was a follow-up uh, sort of email um, interview, I guess you could say, after the initial interview that they had with this guy when we were there at the uh, um, Gen Con in 2023 and um, talking about updates on, at the six-month mark that they they just had and, and was around April 15th is when this came out. Talking about reprinting the first chapter, because as far as we know, there's only been one reprinting so far, and I have not seen him say anything else about reprinting it any further. Uh, what I will read is in this article, his response to where it says you've shipped multiple waves. This is the, the interviewer. You've shipped multiple sorry, waves. Of, I'm sorry. Could you zoom in a bit? Is, is that small? Yeah, there you go. How's this? Rocking. Okay. So the, so the interviewer asks, you've shipped multiple waves of the initial releases. What are your expectations for multiple waves or reprints of Disney Lorcana going forward? Now, realize this is in relation to people saying, rumors confirmed, the first chapter is getting printed again. I'm like, mm, it's not how I read this. And Stefane, the the, the North American uh, what is it, CEO for Ravensburger, mm. responded with, we did reprint the first chapter once. So that there's a confirmation of how much has already happened. We've had right. the initial it's print correct. run plus yeah. one first chapter reprint. That's as of, you know, the 15th, which is only five days ago. It was not an easy endeavor. That, I think, is critical to really, that should be in, like, super bold, neon, flashing lights. It was not easy. I keep saying this. It's not an easy thing to keep going back to the reprint engine every time people want the box prices to go down. But we are very happy that we were able to make that happen as fast as we did to make player meet player interest. Now, what he's talking about is when they reprinted it in December. Remember, we covered that in depth, that they reprinted the first chapter, the first box. We watch, we listen, we act. I love that statement 
you know, that, hey, we're paying attention to what's going on out there. And to me, this is more transparency than you typically get from a company like WotC. Mm. Our North Star is and always will be the Lorcana fan and making sure that the Disney Lorcana TCG is the best game it can be. All reprinting decisions will continue to be made with that in mind. As of right now, we're at a good equilibrium. That, to me, that statement seems to me to say that they're kind of not planning to reprint it. They're at an equilibrium. Mm. So uh, hopefully what we're seeing, the prices drop is just those are the speculators, the people that have been holding onto the boxes because they've been going up. Let's put this into real context here. When did when did Lorcana the first chapter release, Pat? Oh, I want to say that was April. No, but... no, it didn't release until August of last year, which we're not even we're not even at a one year mark from its initial printing. If Watsi was printing a box less than a year later, we would go, mm, yeah, it makes sense. It's in print, mm. right? But I don't think that's what we're facing here. So with the box prices jetting up that fast in the first year twice and then coming down again on, on a reprint rumor, what that means to me and for my caution to everybody out there, which I keep saying, be careful with what you're doing here. Get what you need, what you want, especially when prices have gone low. And I'm going to say that this is probably even another time. Continue to watch. And if you feel it bottoms out and you don't have it and want to get it or want to get more, mm. I think this is an opportunity for the alpha box to have your hands on it if it ever takes off in the future. If you don't have that excess income, do not buy it. This is not financial advice. But certainly on the speculating standpoint, this would make me absurdly um, hesitant to speculate on the product. So I'm warning you again, do not speculate on Lorcana. I think it's a bad bet. Um, oh, but yeah. if you like it, like you and I do, Pat, and I know Mrs. Hillbilly likes it, then by all means, if you don't have it, you can afford it. Keep an eyeball on it. If you don't have it yet, because it's, it's like you pointed out, it's dipped. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that I really liked was in the next chapter. I read, didn't read the entire article, but I read through a good portion of it. And, and I pointed this out before, and you guys is probably sick and tired of hearing it from me. And they said, 2024 was planned as a four booster set year. Are you planning additional products? For example, holiday SKUs to supplement the booster releases. His response, a very special SKU has already been announced for Ursula's return. The Lumineer's Quest Deep Trouble is a co-op game where players can work together to defeat Ursula. See, new cooperative game. It's the first of its kind in TCGs. Um, That's not really a true statement, in my opinion. Um. Because you have, uh, what was it in in even in Magic the Gathering, you had to to kill a god and defeat the Hydra, right? They're decks that are literally that very same work together to kill a boss. Additionally, mm. we have commander raids. Um, they have boss monster. Uh, you know, there there are other um, co op versions in TCGs. Uh, even if you want to say specific products printed for it, that's what to kill a god and and defeat the Hydra were so again i think that's a misstatement but i like the fact that he's aware of it. it it sounds like he's going to lean into it um says we can't wait for fans to get their hands on that what we've also announced this was very interesting to me right here what we've tried to do with commander raids we've also announced the new gateway product designed to help new players easily learn and play Disney Lorcana TCG Disney Lorcana TCG Gateway launches in August. Um, so uh, this is the, the the lineup that was announced. Um, uh, you can read and hear more details on the uh, the lineups for this year. Um, so uh, at any rate, lots of good information. I feel that it, it is a very transparent feeling um set of releases uh coming from um the lorcana folks at this moment 
right? Like, oh, I think absolutely. this is, really, this know, is what I'd like to see. Like, uh, the communication and clarity from that company is definitely a, a good sign for things to come from them. You know, for a while, that's what everybody, uh, you know, applauded Legend Story Studios, the makers of Flesh and Blood, for was how clear they were with the, you know, consumer, how transparent their production numbers were, the the way that they did their collectors originally with first and um, unlimited editions, and then now the, the transition with some of the more profit-driven side of it. Also seems as though I think LSS probably responded well enough going to a single box model because it's getting less sniped. Whereas in Magic the Gathering, I mean, they're just doing everything they can currently to get money. You know, community be damned, it seems. And, and you know, it's, it's funny. Seems... I don't I don't agree with you. Oh, I think really? it's a terrible. I do. As far I as um, Babs, um, uh, single box model. I think it was a terrible idea. I think it was just absolutely terrible idea. And and I had this. You were in the show uh, on uh, at Josh's channel, and he he's more in line with you that it just doesn't work. Well, that's not a that's that's not a real explanation, right? Um, I think that they need to have the first printing and the unlimited. But the the way that they messed up is they didn't release them both at the same time. Yeah, they were they were. Um, uh stilted releases i don't know quite how to describe it they they were um at the almost a month apart which does nobody any good because everybody wants to clamor for the product as soon as it comes out i think that you know we taste that so specifically in magic the gathering how much people want to get the new thing even though you just last week had some new product line come out you want that new stuff right and and i, I think had they changed the way that they released it um, you know, even, even if you stagger it by like a week, I'm fine with that. Like you have a pre pre-release staggered two weeks before the actual release when you can play it in a store and then release the unlimited a week before the, the, you know, tournaments in store are allowed to start. Um, I, I think that that would have been a much better model. It still plays into the whole collectability of the game. So if you, if you really want to get it, you're going to have to pre-order those limited quantities until they run out of of the, the, nice the first printing, right? And then everybody else gets the unlimited boxes. And if you want, how yeah. tell me how that hurts gameplay by have by changing the model up to that. So I think one of the things that they realistically, I think what they learned from the first edition and unlimited boxes is that most people were interested in collecting and speculating, profiteering off of the game itself and actually had fewer players than they thought they would. So by going for a single box model, I think that helped them kind of hide how people are buying into the game and what for they're buying into the game. What I think it caused is all of the collectors and investors to absolutely flee the product. And now you see that the product just can't sustain a price point above like 60 bucks. Yeah, I'm going right? to pull up. And, and, and that's that's where you run into a problem. Whereas you see games like uh, Sorcery, right? Where it's all speculators. Yeah. That's just pure speculation. I think we're getting that yeah. way rapidly yeah. with this Star Wars Unlimited. I, I don't believe it's going to have the, the gameplay support for it. So this but tell is me the... how it would, just, just changing that, that release cycle to what I had mentioned before, how does that hurt players? Because I can tell you how getting rid of the first print run or a first print box absolutely destroys collectors, but I can't see how changing it up to have an unlimited at the same time that you have a first print run, uh, you know, first edition, and you have to have it first edition, fine, separate it by a week. Those would still be a collectible item. I think as long as the limited um, competitive time. scene timed well with releases, that's where it could get kind of sticky. If there's uh, a brand new card that comes out in the freshest release, you know, that weekend a previewed card comes out and it's a must have include for that meta. Um, and if you're going to a competition and you have to wait an entire month before it's priced at something that's acceptable to have two, three, four copies of in a deck, 
because in flesh and blood decks, it's multiplicity. It's not a single. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how that answers my question. For players, if you have to wait a month. To I'm be not saying a month. I said in, in the model that I proposed where yeah. there's only a one week stagger between the first edition and the unlimited and the unlimited comes out prior to release events. Right. They're both available that, prior to release that, events. That would be fine. But right. That's, that's what I'm saying. But going right away from and, and, and the only way that you would realistically get the first edition ones and the only people that would care would be for collectors fighting about it over pre-orders. Yeah. Right. But they killed it instead. Fine. If we can't satisfy the players, then we're just going to nuke the collectors. And I think that's a terrible idea for a card game, at least for long term sustainability. If you're going to be a collectible no. game, right? It I don't consider Flesh and Blood a collectible game. No, not at this point. No. Okay. Well, we're getting that way in an opposite direction with Watsy, where they're just overpricing the shit out of everything that they're releasing. Yeah, yeah. I think that we are in a it, similar enough in the sense that no, I don't think it's worth investing in do Magic the Gathering product, whether it be. For me, you know, financial advice to myself, this is just, you know, financial speculation, you know, me speculating on my finances. Um, well, I think you had some, you know, kind of revelationary events happen this week on that very front. About, oh, absolutely. You know, so if yeah, you want to share so, with, with the audience what you shared with me. Uh, yeah. And so I was talking with Bob about I made an offer to channel members I got some Fallout collector boxes on pre-order from Amazon pretty dang cheap when they first premiered. So I actually got them at way below current market value. So I was offering to channel members $30 shipped for collector packs up to three each. Now, wicked low comparative. Yeah, it's $100 less more than $100 less for a collector box if you were to break it up. I have one person that wanted to buy into it. And I think that as Bob's alluding to how telling that is for current buyers in Magic the Gathering, even at such a steep discount for um, a fan uh, favorite type of thing, you know, they, they really pandered to the audience on the Fallout set. And to see how little reception there was for an offer like that, number one, surprised well, me. Um, and you really, and, you, and I mean, you, you <laughs> it's not just you that was, I don't want to say hyping it, but very excited. Like many people yeah. were super excited for the Fallout edition. Oh, yeah. Um, we've seen it here on this channel. And it, I would say that it was a surprisingly um, well received product, if you will, even. But, uh, you know, give even more time and see where those prices end up at uh, over time. And I think you're you're also going to be very surprised uh, at, at where they ultimately end up, right? That that you have to be very careful on hype, right? Yeah, hype is is is, is just a terrible longer term um, principle in the world of collectibles. Hype fades. Absolutely, the excitement wears off very quickly. And I think any chart in Crimson Vow or Midnight Hunt are great examples of that. Before people had it, they wanted it. And once it was available, it was far too available. It became a joke, and it still is. And I think that's exactly it, is that the hype wore off because, yeah, somebody yucked the yum, as uh, Richie would put it. Yeah, and I mean, I, I correctly, I think that that you can lay that at the feet of Watsi and directly at the feet, um, to a great extent, to the person that's behind me, right? That that's it's it's an unfortunate thing that we've run into that has both caused disturbances in the force with the players and the collectors, and you can, I think, clearly see that the investors have just all but exited the market. Um, mm. you know, th at least for, for magic, I won't say for all TCGs, because I think we're seeing a great deal of that in sorcery. I think we're seeing yeah. like, anytime you see these ridiculous prices I, and even with like the, the foil Elsa's, the enchanted Elsa's and things, 
Mm. Don't kid yourself. Those are speculators, folks. Those aren't, you know, devout players within the first year that are willing to drop two thousand dollars on a single card. Get out of here. Yeah. That's no, yeah. That's that's a speculator. That's not even a collector, right? Um, and so the same thing that you're seeing, and I think that we're gonna see that fate get suffered by all of these um oh, another thing in her regime was <laughs> serialized cards. And I think that that's just going to get to be a meme at, at, mm. at, if it isn't already. Um, but surprisingly Absolutely. enough, I wanted to I wanted to point out just how well received it, it appears that uh, OTJ is uh, right now. I'm hearing yeah. just positive vibes throughout the community. And I think that that's healthy. Right. We need that in the community. There's a lot of things to look at, especially in today's financial markets for, for negativity out there. And I'm glad that the players are enjoying the shit out of OTJ at the moment. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's maintaining at least stable box prices. You see that release drop back to somewhat stable back down a bit, but it's not, you know, just an unmitigated disaster like Markov Manor. Swing. Yeah. So, but, I mean, we're, you know, kind of bouncing all over the place a, a little bit here. Um, yeah. But realize that even on your entire chart there, that's like a $16 swing. Yeah, right. exactly. So um, yeah, it, it's not as drastic people. as it looks, but we need the, these charts to be far more stable than they are for, for the game to be more healthy. This is the um, vital signs of a game that has just been absolutely tortured by hype and speculation and overprinting and just, you know, it, it, it reflects the instability of, of a magic market. Like I remember, uh, you know, for the longest time playing Magic, the Magic boxes, the prices were stable as shit for a long, long time, folks. You know, they found their prices and they stayed at those prices forever. I you wonder know? what the exposure and, and was anymore. at that point, though. You know, now there are so many different sure. sets of and, odds, and, you know, different well, types and, of, you know, buyers, whether it's uh, little sure. Timmy with his you know, kind of allowance or whatever kids do nowadays, Ugh, kids. And then you got people like me that are, you know, that middle ground of uh, player collector, if something's cool. And then you've got people like yourself, you know, that have practically a humidity controlled room with boxes upon rows of sealed product. I think that there are so many different ways now that people engage with magic where, I, I'm unsure because I wasn't there what that type of atmosphere was 20 years ago. I love ago. you too, Terry Vegas. Um, well, and that's why I try to share some of it. Hmm. Um, and understand I've had various varying degrees of interaction with magic over the years. It's not like I've been a, 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 a hyper tuned, uh, in tune like I am now. I pay far more attention. But I mean, let, let's be a little fair as well. Back when I started and back, you know, even in the good old days, six, seven years ago, um, you know, the internet and all these online stores didn't exist at the rate that they did. You didn't have big box stores selling the product. You know, like you said, it's, it's a different, it's a different world, right? So you can't expect it to be like the good old days and get off my lawn, you kids. Um, because it's a different world. Things adapt, things change. Um, some of it's, you know, by natural inclination, some of it's by more exposure simply because of the electronic age and buying things. And certainly the COVID era had a lot to do with this, with people sitting at home oh, bored yeah. and getting exposed yeah. more to things on the interwebs and the YouTubes. Uh, you know, if you look back at the number of YouTube content creators, just even like seven years ago, it was just a handful. And now, you know, we're all over the place out there, including us. Hey, what's up coach? So, again, it, it is a very different world. And we didn't have TCG Player. All you basically had was eBay for years and years and years. Um, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a very different world. Um, but like I said, these, these graphs that we see now are a little better window into the world uh, of, of Magic the Gathering. It gives other people a price to buy off of. What you knew about box prices previously for most of magic history is whatever they had them for sale at the LGS, which was pretty consistent around the country, right? Right around that hundred dollar box price forever. And now that we have more access to more information, well, you now get everybody's what we're trying to, here. you know, cut throat, you know, get the lowest price they can, whether it's buying or selling. And I think it, 
to somewhat of a detriment to both sides of the equation, whether it's the person buying or selling that much information at this point has definitely seemed <laughs> out to just drive the price down. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Hillbilly. I, I don't know that, that that's my, my strong suit. I appreciate the sentiment. Um, and I bet they have much smarter people than me working for them. I bet they really do. They better. Um, However, you know, this is this is a complicated thing in an ever shifting world, right? Like I said, it's a it's a new market for them too, folks. Yeah. Uh they had very you know, dependable things they could count on in years past. And every time you pull a thread on a spider web, you know, the whole thing shakes. Mm. So every every reaction that they make, um <laughs> toast has got it on the head i was thinking the same dang thing they wouldn't make <laughs> any money with bob as uh the head of the company i don't i don't i don't think they wouldn't make any money but it certainly wouldn't be these skyrocketing numbers right they would certainly be much see... more focused on the health of the game exactly that was going to be uh my my point on it as well is that there would be a continued health and engagement with the game longer term than what they see now with that two to three year turnover in a magic the gathering player and i don't think that extending standard has helped them in any discernible i way. don't understand that move either it, that's it, just it's like, like what? It's toxic for longer uh i yeah i whatever i don't even know what to say about that like i i don't understand many of the moves they're making i could tell you arena wouldn't exist at all like that just wouldn't even be a thing. I think that's a terrible thing for the bottom line profit for Watsi. I think that they could make a lot more profit by not giving away the cow with the milk there. I think that's a dumb idea. Um, at least with 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 Mitgo, you had to pay for your digital products, right? You had to make a choice between real products and and imaginary products, but you so you, you don't pay less to get imaginary. What's that? You don't think the MTX are cutting it? The microtransactions of buying gems in I mean, incorrect amounts to be able to buy what you're looking for? Practically you buying power as, now with all the wild cards. Are, are you are you, are you asking that as a serious question? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I do not. Um, at at any rate. Uh, I, I think that it, you know, scratches the itch for too many people. I think it's, it's, it's terrible. Um, uh, I think that at, at any rate, I think that we're at a turning point, you know, to get back on track with, with tonight's discussions. I, I think that the, the positive vibes of outlaws is good. I think we all just need to kind of turn our backs and just kind of ignore the, the, uh, well, honestly, MH3, I think is going to be just disastrous for people. I think it's going to have when you when you bump up the prices if you don't think people yeah. feel bad when prices go up let me just point two sets out to you yeah. magic 30 and cuz people like the product of the magic 30 if i was to walk up and give you a free pack of i don't what what would you say are some of the uh, the lord of the rings um collector pack or uh uh uh, uh and all these are free, but you can only take one. We'll put Lord of the Rings, Caverns of Ixalan, Magic 30, Commander Masters, Collector Pack. Which one do you think the vast majority of people are just going to walk up and snatch for free? Probably M30. Okay, thank you. Now, well, it, people so don't like, me, though, like It's not that they don't yeah. want the product. They don't like the product. They don't like the price point of the product, right? Yeah. Let's be real. That's what people hated about M30 is not the product itself. But the price point of it and what's ridiculously insane is they gave away 80 percent of it for free so, so you know just like 80 percent of up. m30 was free free 100 yeah. percent zero dollars now um and, and 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 the point with that is look at the price point and what makes people angry of commander masters and i'm not talking about draft boosters i'm talking about the collector boosters and the set boosters and and the price point of of m30 people didn't like it commander masters was a disaster just an absolute shit show and no one wanted it for that price i think that was the the big issue and um you know over at uh kitchen table uh right. it's, it's not that it's a bad product it's yeah. a bad price point and that's what makes people angry exactly. and now look at mh3 go ahead and pull up mh3 Oh, this is like 
it, it, if Come this on. were gasoline, it would be illegal to charge this much. Like, I think <laughs> a playbook like, for 280. Oh my God. I think that this is going to be another disaster. And mm. then right on the heels of this, what's coming out right after this? Boy, that's one we should just close our eyes and hold on to the handrails. Was it Bloomboro? No. What, See, it's so shitty. One? Nobody even remembers what it is. <laughs> it only comes out one month after it. Well, tell me. I'm on the edge of my seat. Assassin's Creed. Oh, geez. Yeah, that. <laughs> it's like nobody even is, is thinking about it, yeah. right? It's so bad that, like, it's, it's well, funny. I think that that's going to be a travesty of a product itself in uh, two different ways. One, the most base of ways. I think the decisions that they've made with that, the style of it just does not sit well. I think even though it's kind of a cool idea, doing Leonardo da Vinci and the card's only ever going to be an Italian for their showcase card, Cleopatra cool she's egyptian but why you're gonna do it all in hieroglyphics screw you with the coast this is bullshit i hated when they did it with the egyptian god cards and i'm not cool with it now either so they actually did that in lorcana by the way second i just thing. opened I, I just my birthday was two days ago and miss sherry vegas love you again uh got me a, a volcanic island uh almost completing my dual land uh uh, reconstruction um and a box of into the ink lands now okay. I, I i have to admit that that it was not the best of boxes uh we opened it i opened it with her it was the first time she swung and missed at the enchanted foils uh you don't Little get island, it. but it was a fun opening anyways and one of the there, there's a few things that i got out of enjoyment out of it number one as the, the struck me odd enough they have um do, can we bring that up let me bring that. You already have TCG player up. If you can bring up into the ink lands and look at the commons. So one of the cool little things is they have the 101 Dalmatians in there. And they have um it's the only one I've seen so far where they have four different artworks or five different artworks of the little you have to you have to go over to the left and, and select just commons. Get just do cards and commons. See him? <laughs> That's all the same card. Da da uh, Dalmatian Puppy Tail Wagger. So I thought that was just really cool that they have five different versions of them. I did get a, a, a foil. I want to get 101 of these. Like, just how cool would that be? I want 101 of these. Try to get, you know, like 20 of each. And then one of them, whichever one strikes me. And honestly, the one I think I like the le the best. Which one do you think? Which one do you like the best out of these five? Oh man! Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Starting from the top left, going to the bottom right. Which one? And everybody in the audience, please uh, let us know which of these Dalmatian arts do you like the best. If you don't like any of them, don't vote. But do you like one, two, three, four, or five in the chat, please? Um, oh man! And which one do you? First one, which one do you like best? And which one do you think I like best? Okay, I got to get a closer look at these bad man pajamas. Okay. Did you know this was a thing with the the I five? Did not know this was a thing. So and now I want to I'm like... so pleasantly <laughs> surprised. Okay, so we got Winky. Okay. You got oh cute little gal. Okay. Oh, I like that. You're you're playful. Okay. Oh, okay. So far, you're the you're the heartwarming one. One black here, right here. Oh, look at you, you old fighter, though. Okay. This is this is my jam right here. 4B. You, you didn't so... have, get the fifth one. That was all five. No, you didn't. You missed that one. No, a single black here. Yeah, this is the fourth one. I'm going with. Oh, with you went these. in a different different order. Yeah. yeah. So which I think one do you like is, that. I think this is my my guy right here. A little devil, yep. the one that chewed up your your pillows while you're at work. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This is the one that's like <laughs> gonna play fight with me every moment it can. Oh, uh, I'm actually with I'm I'm actually with Richie. I like number three the best as well. So I'll probably get one extra copy. I'll get 21 copies of uh, number three there, or actually it's common number four A. I like that one the best. Um, it's actually the cheapest, but I like it the best. I think it's the cutest. <laughs> reminds me of our dog Howie. Very very much reminds me of Howie. Hey Howie. Uh, you like number four there? That's the that's the same one that that Pat likes there. The yeah, the little devil. 
That's the one that's, you know, he's a little scallywag. He's like, uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Playful little bugger. Yeah. But anyways, that was a very pleasant surprise. And I'm like, oh, now I want to do something cool with that. Right. And how much would it even cost me? Let's say these are average of what, 25 cents a piece? I don't know. That's probably less than that. But we'll say 25, uh, 20 cents a piece. Right. Yeah. So I get a hundred of them. Shipping, maybe 30 bucks for that entire endeavor. Yeah. Right. And how cool yeah. is that? Right. That I now have a hundred and one Dalmatians, right? Like that, I just think is that's yeah. dope. I want that. That's I'm gonna do that. Um, it's unfortunately still, we only pulled Commander Masters. Like that's the thing. It's like for the price of one set booster box of Commander Masters, you can get three boxes of Into the Inklands. How much more fun is that going to be than opening Commander Masters? Like for me, a ton. Yeah, <laughs> and I same. did. Is I actually, I actually bought more than that. So far, I I, I bought two sealed cases, right? So uh, that's what I have on on tap. And and you guys know my my stay on that is that, you know, I I like having product, not because I'm gonna retire on it, but you know, I want to have it for like whenever, if ever, I get into it. And years down the road, I'm like, hey, let's draft some 101 Dalmatians, right? Just that would be cool as shit if it survives as a game. I think. Commander Masters? No. It's Not funny because price. this came out and it was near $400. It was, you know, upper 300s, hit four almost, and nobody really wanted it. So it prices crashed, got under three, right? And now it's starting to creep back up. But as you can see, nobody's bought it in the last five fucking days. You know why? Because it's near $400 again. No one wants that yeah. shit for that price. And I think that that I... is just the biggest problem with the newest products the air well, and, and, and now compare that compare that to, to to modern horizons 3 and like this that's exactly effect. it like that's 100 percent going to be in my prediction what we see here as well when you've got a collector box coming out at 424 like it seems as though it's a joke and i mean a play booster box 288 for pre-sale this, this is just gouging like there's no point in this i i can't imagine this selling particularly well no like no. i don't know what they could put in there to justify those costs because here here's where it's going to go sideways folks I, I, when I you start paying you're going to be hyper aware that you paid 300 bucks by the time you know with tax because they don't have tax on here 300 bucks to buy a box if yeah. you don't get every hit that you want out of this, and I'm going to promise you out of a single box, you're not going to right. get every hit that you want out of the set. Yeah. No. Um, that it's going to feel bad when you open a $300 box, you get, let's even say, I'm being generous, $150 worth of cards out of it. I don't think you're going to out of an average box mm. uh, that are only going to go down in the future like there's just no meat on the bone when you buy products this expensive like what what does this box have to go up to to make it profitable for you to buy after you pay taxes on selling it and then you're going to, to pay taxes or bond buying it and then you're going to, to pay taxes on selling it and you're going to have to pay shipping yeah right by the time what would you have to sell this for if you bought it at this price the box would have to climb up to four or five hundred dollars to even consider selling it and at four hundred dollars your profit margin is going to be pretty low actually after shipping and taxes so Again, once you start talking about these price levels, uh, you know, taxes scale with the price of the box, folks, and shipping yeah, just absolutely. gets more and more expensive. So, and then all you need is one person to 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 scam you out of this, and and you know, not uh, you know, charge back spoiled, all those yeah, kind of things. But uh, Richie's asking: some cards have been spoiled. There's definitely um, some power in it, but as far as the land cycle. It's nothing impressive, and well, I, thought they, I, I thought they revealed. I thought they revealed that uh, the, the 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 allied fetches are in it. Yeah, even at that though, like none of those are more than twenty dollars a piece at this point. Because fetch lands, I mean, after all the complaining from folks, they finally hit crashes. You know, it's, yeah, I, I think that Modern Horizons 2 showed what can happen to fetch lands, right? But they are yeah. rebounding to an extent, and that's as I had predicted. 
But I, what I did, what I, what I caution a whole lot of people out there. Look, look at the price of a Modern Horizons two box. So, yes, the fetches are rebounding. But it, my, I, you know, myself, I've got more than ten boxes sitting on my shelf of Modern Horizons two. Okay, I have more than ten boxes, and what that means is that Modern Horizons two, folks, is just massively still available. So look at that. I, I didn't buy any boxes at 173 or cheaper. All of my draft boxes were right around the $200 price point. So if they can be this cheap, was it three years after release? Two years, three years? Two plus years? This is coming up on three? Is that what this is? Was it 2021 when that came out? Doesn't date. It, it, either way. I mean, this for, came out the same year that 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 um, geez, Strixhaven and and, and AFR came out. Um, I don't think so. I think that's an anomaly. But uh, like, I did see him getting the one sixties. Um, no, actually, the enemy fetch lands were more desired and more expensive. Uh, they the allied are more expensive now because they haven't had the massive reprint at a close time, but so the. Man. Enemy fetches have traditionally, you know, like the Misty Rainforest because it's Simic. Yeah, I mean, you can get um, these all day. Yo! But, uh, you know, it, it showed oh, what can happen to, to fetch lands. Fetch lands were like this mythical beast before they had a meaningful reprint. And I guarantee you're going to have a meaningful reprint here. I, I'm just, I'm not, not at all, like, super stoked for... Big boxes. Um, Things were annoying. Like all my boxes of those were, yeah. You know, I think the cheapest was like two twenty five. I bought of the set displays, and I think I have like four or five of them still unopened. And I've got I don't know like nine boxes of draft, and I've got a couple of bundles and OG starter deck. I'll start at eighty eight. I like this product. Like I think that if you don't like have any on your shelf, I think spending like Yo, two boxes is Solar a great God. idea. Yeah, I mean honestly, for a hundred. 100 bucks shipped you know taxes and all that product. yeah i mean for the fun of it that's that's very good and, and i'll be let's be very clear i mean i think any of the jump starts are a good product to play with so at yeah. their relative price points you know what this product is for is not meant for cracking it open <laughs> for value let's let's just let's just be super clear about what we're talking about I thought this was a great product. I think there are some very good cards you would like to have after you're done playing with them in your collection. Mm. Some of them are very, you know, like Blood Artist is in here, I believe. Um, you have buddy. exquisite, you have exquisite blood in here. You've got, you got a lot of very state. You got Crater Hoof Behemoth in here. You know, there's a lot of very, very. Oh, I forgot about Ristic Study. Study, Phyrexian Tower, Crater Hoof, Allosaur Shepherd is still creeping back up wow even after all the reprints and stuff this card definitely got blasted but good to see it creeping back up don't get me wrong shit's gonna get the the reprint soon enough but yeah you got a good couple of cards in here tiny bones oh man og tiny bones huh yeah, yeah. I, i'm just saying that i think it's an excellent product and not just for value but at least you won't it's feel bad i don't believe yeah opening this product and honestly if you buy one of the other jump starts even like pick the shittiest one i don't know uh dominary united jump start i was gonna say brothers war <laughs> no i think dominary jump start dominary united jump start was the one that was like most hated if i'm not mistaken you only have the pack there fuck 46 dollars Right now, I, I saw these go all the way down to like twenty nine bucks on sale. Eighteen packs, though, as you've mentioned before, and to to a great point, we got to reiterate this: eighteen packs is three people to be able to like use this. Like it, it's it's just not not the correct amount of packs. But at, put, at forty at forty six bucks, I mean, you're really not how much you're really going to be hurt. Yeah. You're going to lose more than $46 on opening any new product, period. Yeah, right. If you just want to rip wrappers, you know, and have a fun time, have something that you can actually slam two packs together with somebody that's reasonably new at it. Right. You can feel totally fine saying, 
Don't worry, little Jimmy, little Tina. You guys can keep these and have fun. And it's whatever. Like, this is just a great team-building exercise and a fun whatever. Agreed. Kind of and that, that was my point. I, if I had to pick a product that I think is the the least amount of feel-bads, I'm, I'm going to go with these jump starts. Oh my God. Um, for actually, what they are. So, yeah, like I said, it was it was like, I think I saw them on sale at like 29 bucks. is the cheapest I've seen them. Um, yeah, and I still didn't buy them. But I do. I, I am a favorite because it, it just kind of strikes, you know, kind of a chord with me. The original, the OG Jumpstart, which, by the way, I've seen went much cheaper than that. I've definitely seen OG Jumpstart at the like seventy dollar price point. I think I saw them go all the way down to like sixty nine bucks at one point on like a Black Friday kind of sale. <laughs> nice. Um. And yeah, like I said, it was there. It is sixty nine bucks right there. Um. And and. Uh, battle bonds more expensive but that's because there's a lot of cards in there that um haven't had any reprints yet right that's they, their only printing is in here battle bone <laughs> battle bong. Um, yeah speaking of battle bong hey happy 420 to everybody out there hope yeah you're 420 it. smoke them if you got them um yeah <laughs> i'm gonna stop but, my camera when i do that though bob uh you don't have well you don't have to here in ohio um at any rate well maybe youtubes would hate us for it i, yeah. I don't really care i mean i'm, I'm not you know i'm, I'm so much about it's the so youtube weird because it like splits in half it's an interesting well, and so does cons conspiracy i think did the same thing with uh, like that and so did modern horizons one i think it was some weird design that they wanted at any rate um i think as they reprint um more of these battle bonds uh big hit cards because oh, look at the cards, look at the card values in it in Battle Bond. You can just click on the Battle Bond word and you'll see that like some of the cards are still, you know, like doubling season. They're, they're land tax. Wow, that's really taken a beating lately. Um oh, but there's there's a bunch of like ten dollar cards in it. Yeah. But I would say that for the price point, you're much more likely to get this card. I hate planeswalkers. Like I think it's just one of the dumbest things they did in Magic. Pretty much. Average. I'm not a fan of Planeswalkers myself. It, it's annoying as shit. But, you know, like I said, there's 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 a few of these. But if you honestly look, you're more likely to get bigger hits out of um, Jumpstart uh, the original. Yeah, especially for the price point. I mean, yeah. you can get you can get what boxes and change. I mean, for two thirty nine versus um, much closer to three boxes, hundred bucks each, let's say shipped so yeah you get two of these for one a battle bond and also no that's 88 shipping included no yeah 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 some taxes yeah you're under 100 you're 95 maybe yeah well but the so taxes sure, would also be on battle bond relatively it. speaking yeah I'd so, say this is again I, I think you're closer to getting three boxes of jump start basically as we Basically, you can say 80 times three would be 240, and that's almost a 240, right? So slightly more, but you get three for one, right? Almost. Yeah, because this is plus 10 shipping. Yeah. yeah. So at, at, at any rate, my, my point is I think you'll get a much, you'll go much farther buying three boxes of Jumpstart than you would one box of Battle Bond. Mm. Um, and, and I mean, unless you're just going for the Battle Bond experience, and that's, you know, that's why I have my 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 collection of sealed is for that very concept you know i've got sealed for for how oh, son of a monkey um infinity which i'm a fan of and you see that kind of vacillate between hate and love for infinity um yeah i like it right so i bought a case of it i bought a case of baldur's gate i bought a case of um lord of the rings and it's because i want it in my personal stock that if i want to play it i don't have to like okay where can i go buy it now uh you know and then wait maybe have an issue with it what is this this is, this is a one, one piece, piece. Nah. yeah i just don't understand Hard like that's that that's the same thing it, for me it's just wonder and not understanding like why people are so into this shit uh, number one i don't enjoy the show and maybe that's why it's so i tried confusing. watching it i just couldn't get into it yeah, it's weird as shit. Like, it is, it is and very weird, and it's anime. like so talk about like super it's campy. It's like childish anime. Like it's like I can get into anime like Castlevania, 
and arcane, but when it gets very childish, like one punch man and it or and, and um one piece and sword art online, they're they're just not my they they're not my jam. Yeah, this ain't doing it for me. So and, I'm not yeah. gonna bash people that want it. I'm gonna say any of these new card games, even my darling, Lorcana. Be very careful if you're getting into them for the for the mm, financial value. All of these could very much no longer be in vogue, and then you're sitting with a bunch of cardboard that you are speculating on the price, and you're gonna be mad that you have it. Um, only buy what you want to have, and don't mind being stuck with. I'm kind of baffled that those prices are still that low with such a great set. Yeah, I think it's probably because the triumphs are starting to get some. Uh, mild printing here and there. What but, I don't understand is how we haven't shit. broken other things with 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 uh, with mutate, mutate like That's, yeah, yeah. Although Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief and mutate is just so broken, and yeah, honestly, like 125 bucks or a box of Icoria, it's pretty decent, honestly, to me. Like, how much fun I had with Ikoria. The sealed environment for a draft is powerful. It's good. You also get, like, some pretty decent cards out of it. So, yeah, I'm a little surprised that um, that's still the price it's at. Oh, yeah, plus there's box toppers. They kind of shied away from that. One of the things that, yeah, and I thought this was, this was the most fun for box toppers I've had in a set. And it's a standard set. Like, that was just dope in my opinion um however comma comma yeah um dual brain speaking to richie's oh, last damn. couple of statements oh, there where a lot of people stop buying sealed and half the collectors hit the brakes and i and i, I want to e express that i think not just the collectors hit the brakes i think i think the investors left the building i think the collectors have definitely pumped the brakes hard uh, people like me where i buy almost nothing at this point yeah um and and dual brain expressed that he used to buy a box and then it went down to five packs he just released a video this week i, I recommend you go yeah, check yeah. it out because yeah, he, he expressed that that idea more eloquently than i am um but just in general not but i don't think it's just the collectors that slowed down i think the players also slowed down right everybody lgs's have slowed down um Everybody's slowing down, and I think I'm I'm very very curious to see the release of the quarterly reports tomorrow. So yeah, I mean I can only expect that they're going to have to admit to a financial downturn, especially compared to last year with Lord of the Rings and how big some of their other universes beyond products were. It definitely feels as though f for the company there's probably a slump that we've been experiencing for the last few months. Whereas as far as power nice. creep and all that jazz goes, I think we've been experiencing a lot of push as far as the, the game. Um, I well, think... they, they, I've said it many times, you know, like there's only two things that are going to push boxes to, you know, support prices way, way higher than they have been. Um, you know, we're looking at $500 boxes that they're trying to push out yet. We cried about the thousand dollar special edition box. Okay, cool. Um, the throttling back, I, I wish I had numbers to point to, and that's what I'm going to be basing. You know, I'm going to be looking heavily at the numbers in the quarterly report, not just this one, but moving forward to keep track of numbers that they keep trying to post and trying to say all these different shuffling. And I think they're going to try to blame the general economy out there with inflation and you know all of the layoffs that are going on and there is a serious economic downturn for especially um i hate to say it but the lower income folks which is probably the vast majority of magic players out there and collectors uh rich people tend not to do these kind of things in general there are exceptions looking at you posty and some of the nfl players and things but in general, the vast majority of the Magic audience does not have the finances to support um, luxury items like this. What's my thoughts? On... Um, well, I mean, of course they're going to reprint it. 
like <laughs> there's there's no choice and any other like i'm gonna go farther than that and you know because there's a lot of cards i'm unaware of like the one that jake and joel pointed out and they're gonna do it in a variety of ways right they're gonna sneak in reprints every place that they can it'll probably in my opinion this will probably make it into a commander deck first to try to push a commander deck set um could it could be in the list it could be in the secret lair but if I were to guess, they're they're trying to slide them in. If you're not paying attention, that's what Joel was basically showing that they're doing new things and kind of silently shoving them into, uh, you know, like commander precons to push the sales on those. Mm. <clears throat> and I think that uh, of course they're going to reprint it, and they're going to keep unfortunately reprinting my darling. They don't need to because there's billions of copies of her out there. But the priest of Titania lover and man they have just absolutely destroyed that and you want another one that they're going to reprint they're going to reprint goblin lackey oh mass um, will probably get it that, that's soon. my pet card right like th that's definitely I my think pet this card. is like the unofficial sponsor of our fucking channel at this point <laughs> but only because of me <laughs> like hey you know what card would go great in that deck mask with nexus hey well, i you think know, really, like, i've taken that mask from you mask. and it's just like yeah, it's in the back of my mind when i'm seeing a lot of like yeah but how many scarecrows are in magic the gathering mask with nexus they're all scarecrow is pat Every, everyone that comes in hits the battlefield yeah, yeah uh, right. oh what do you mean everything's an outlaw now what i mean it, uh, it's good and it's bad yeah. <laughs> i i love mask with nexus and and it's I've really said it great since about playing in a cooperative format with you is I don't have to like get angry about like what the fuck is a wumpus like I don't I don't <laughs> ever have to worry about what is a wumpus like oh it's a good card don't worry Pat yeah we need to play some more I've been itching to play some but uh, it, you know it, it it's it, it, it's the, the reprint machine to 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 answer your question is not going to stop solar guard and, and 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 that means that unfortunately even with the departure of miss cynthia williams they have let the genie out of the bottle they have opened pandora's box there is no going back for them until they have drained the value of every magic card and i will be surprised if they don't stop Short of one or two things, even concerning the reserve list, either straight up reprinting reserve list cards, removing them from the reserve list one of the time, because all they say is they can't reprint what's on the reserve list. They never said they can't remove them from the reserve list, which they've already removed cards from the reserve uh, list. You tricky bastard. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, those are things no, that, that can happen, tricky. folks. Yeah. You know, additionally, even if they did reprint it, this whole uh, promissory estoppel is a joke. If you go talk to a lawyer, go talk yeah. to a free lawyer. Um, it's a joke. It, there's there's no possibility of anybody winning a, a case against Watsi for promissory estoppel. And if you think they give a shit about their reputation, really, 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 um, this that's a that's a joke to me at least. Um, so I I think that unfortunately we're on a on an irreversible course. This is a a steam locomotive heading on a downward grade folks there's 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 no stopping it it's it's going to come to its natural conclusion whether we want it to or not you mm. can pump the brakes all you want but it's still going there um so again yeah this whole serialized thing it, it can't sustain but all it does it makes me very sad that what serialized does to you to you the players trying to collect is that now you've taken collecting out of a serious person's hands on cracking packs to collect and collecting in a very tradable fashion to now it's going to be online only for collectors there's no way you're going to collect other than buying singles off of sources online like this you're just maybe going to a magic fest and picking yeah up you know i think that's a great point bob I, I, and i was going through some of the piles of magic cards and trying to do some spring cleaning and stuff around the apartment today and um i pulled out my binder right and i started taking some cards out of my binder realizing that i needed to slim down that portion of it because i don't collect in the way i used to and the only reason i had a binder 
was so I could bring it down to my LGS when we'd have commander days and I could try and trade with people. You know, it was my trade binder. That was like a thing when I was in high school, right? And when I got back into Magic the Gathering, I thought that's what it was. And then Corona hit and all the changes with Magic the Gathering occurred in general as far as collectability. And nowadays, it's just not a thing that I ever think about doing. You know, I recently took a picture of some cool Fallout cards that I had pulled. Hardened Scaled, you know, um, uh, that Specimen 73 or whatever, that Hornet Queen, that I can give to a friend. But I'm not collecting and holding on for trade purposes the same way I did before. Like you said, it's mostly online sales and interactions in that manner. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. And what that means is far fewer people are going to be able to enjoy the collectability of the game. That's what serialized represents, folks, in reality. Is it only a limited number of people, period, get to enjoy it? And most people aren't going to chase it because it's financially just... Um, there's a card that, that mocks me. The Foil Cradle. I could have bought one for 100 bucks back in 99 maybe 2000 i remember being in an lgs and a dude was like 100 bucks he had one right there in front of me and i'm like 100 dollars you know how many dual lands i could get for 100 dollars <laughs> <laughs> i can get five dual lands for that price and i um, mean light play that's not bad send that bitch and get it graded all these people with moderately played foils man it's just what the how the game has changed there's nobody would play with that card in, in today's age a little bit of a curl, it almost looks like. Yeah. Some of the old ones do, do curl, for sure. I mean, they are yeah, foils. For sure. And that card is beat. Uh, that is not even... Uh, get out of here. 1900 to buy that beat piece of shit. And then there's one for 2300 Like, if you're talking, you know, 1900 versus 2300 really? No. Go away. Wow. This is one of the most stock-looking images I've ever seen. I no, that has to be the real card. I have a very difficult time believing that that's the card that they're selling. No, I'll bet you $100 that is. Look, you can even tell by the, if you really look at the bottom Little of the card in the bottom left, yeah. Yeah. there are fingerprints there. I mean, not human fingerprints, but fingerprints of that card with the little chips that are there. So if you get anything other than that and it doesn't have those chips in it, then, you know, you, you send it back and they punish that person. But at, at any rate, uh, the game has definitely changed, and every everybody, us, Watsi, the stores, big box, online entities, we all have to change with the times with it. And I'm I'm trying to evolve along with it, and not just you know do the, um, yeah, look at that one list. Yeah, but it goes $5, from five dollars up to five thousand dollars. That's one of the weird things about sorcery is one. It seems as though they designed the game and how their boxes are comprised to do stuff like this, where you can have the cheapest card here for $5.76. You can get it in decks and make it playable. Then you have the $5,000 foil version, which there's probably like 10 of in the whole world. <clears throat> the problem is, I don't want to play this game. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> like, that's the, one of many problems I have with legions realms at war is i don't want to play the game but at least these cards look cool to me like there's a certain 90s kind of metal to it you know it, it's got style i'll give it that but i would rather have this as like a poster than a card to put in a deck i, I don't want to speculate on pieces of cardboard like yeah they're fancy rectangles and all that jazz but damn like i i can see the appeal if the game survives but to me there's no way that you, the, that price is justified in anybody's world one person bought one for twenty five hundred dollars three months ago yeah there's was, no market is what this it's means probably fucking louis like they, they, <laughs> they, that's the funny thing about like being a content creator but is if you want to see something that is what i consider Louis. ridiculous how about we go to my darling uh in lorcana oh Shh. 
All right. Now, this card's been volatile as shit for a hot minute. It goes up. It goes down. But it does move. People are buying this thing. Oh, absolutely. Even at absurd prices. Yeah, I mean, in the last week, you've had one, two, three, four sales. So that's like $6,000 worth of these cards has sold in the last week. Yeah, it's only four. How many have sold in the last three months in the time that that one uh, sorcery oh, card sold? Yeah, no. Like just in this month alone. Let's just do this month alone. Then you can multiply that by three. Yeah. And it's not even the end of the month. We're a third of the way through the month. Twenty four just in April, and that's like an average of about fourteen hundred each. Jesus, and we're only a third of the way through the month. Yeah, or two oh, thirds yeah. of the way through the month. So, so let's say that thirty copies a month are selling. Just crazy that, yeah, like you're saying. I mean, they under eight hundred dollars, just under, and now it's you know, fluctuations, it's probably some people just buying, selling them for profit, you know, buy low, sell high, like a stock. Well, I'll guarantee you a lot of those are resells, you know, ones that yeah. the people bought when it was down at, you know, four or $500 mark. And now they're listing them, trying to cash out of winter. with the, with the threat of, of a reprint. But that's if, for those of you that missed how we opened the, the segment today, uh, and we're gonna be wrapping up pretty soon here, folks. Hmm. Um, I was pointing out that the rumors of the reprint, like if anybody can 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 tell me on Discord where they get this proof, because that's that's what there's been several videos out there that you know, the clickbait got me, uh, saying proof that the first chapter is being reprinted. I didn't find any proof, and I've been watching. Um, matter of fact, I you know I, I I read the statement from the Ravensburger North American CEO, seemed like exactly the opposite to me that they don't have any intention of reprinting that it was difficult the first time around they were glad they were able to do it and that they're on to the next basically which is what they should be doing right it's a little weird that boy that's going to be a bad model if they don't keep the print presses rolling for more than six months right like that's just mm. eh, i hope they don't just have like first print run and then more if more demand hits then we'll print more but you know that's not a bad idea because if you look at prices of the boxes for uh, rise of the floodborne are reasonable so are into the ink lands you know i think that they found their volume that they need to be printing at and they're currently satisfying the market and that they'll continue to watch that and try to keep the boxes you know msrp can we look at those the, the box prices for lorcana look at that that's below msrp in case you all don't remember msrp is around 143 dollars a box and clearly you know this really has never been at msrp it's always been somewhat lower uh, ever since release yeah. so you know i don't want to talk about speculators prior to release because that's a dumb idea but same thing with um into wow. the ink land Still, it's most current set 112 dollars. very reasonable box price folks probably just gonna buy a box of this tonight like it's for $112, like I'm just going to have a draft with my friends and kind of just force it on them. Like it, this is a fun time. Um, one of my I buddies, I want your Dalmatian cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody out there. Yeah. Send me all your Dalmatians. Let's get to, let's go Bob to 101 Dalmatians. Um, 101 Dalmatian donations. There we go. Um, I don't have a PO box. I so know you can't really send it to me. You'd have to be a personal friend. Um, at, at any rate, twelve. Uh, I, what I'm saying is that these. Oh God! And there's there's the there's from our last week yeah, topic. I was, the, just, I was the like, unopened don't. boxes that are opened. Get, can't God, see I want to just can't see them. it. It can't. But hurt you understand them. what I'm saying? But look, the the, the sell through rates are still pretty high too. Like, yeah. look, we have sales today of these boxes. Oh right? yeah, like, absolutely. The demand I mean, is clearly there. Folks. When I close out, look at that. All that's from today. Right? Nine five dollars. Probably have twenty me. boxes. Oh, shipping. It's probably a trip. twenty twenty boxes sold at least today somewhere in that ballpark. And yeah. then you got you know just like in the last two days, you probably have I don't know. We'll say. Oh yeah, I'd say in the last week there's probably a hundred boxes plus that have sold through here. 
So the sell through rates are good. I think that's healthy is what we're saying. Yeah. Um, what I would like to see is even more cool stuff that I'd like to see people bitch about it, that they have <clears throat> exclusives at the Disney parks. Like yeah, I just feel, dude. and they mentioned in that article that I, that I was reading about Dis the interaction at Disney parks and having the product available there, all that good jazz. Um, he, you know, he was nodding to that then, which I think that's good. I think that they need to keep a healthy relationship with Disney. Right, because Disney's so tight fisted, still have very grave concerns about that regarding Lorcana. That uh, unfortunately, I didn't read anything in the article yet referring to Disney, and maybe they're going to be very tight lipped about that. And probably not a problem with transparency from Lorcana on that, folks. From from Ravensburger, that's probably they don't want to tap dance on a landmine with Disney. Right, they probably don't want to say anything that they're talking about with Disney behind closed doors. Right, and I think as long as this product continues to to do well, be a a positive event for the Disney brand, that this will continue, right? So I just um, wanted to show this here for one second. Ninety nine cent shipping on on an entire case of these. That's just funny to me. Why even put shipping at that point? Like it's just a joke. But sure. And if you divide yeah, that by four, you know that's a hundred and. Let's see, 53 divided by yeah. four. Like you're, you're, it's just that you're getting the sealed case side of it versus. Sure. That, that, and and I, I like that. I like that. I think for anybody that's interested in it and thinks that that's a good price point, sealed cases are where it's at, folks, because we're talking about enchanted cards, right? Yeah. That you should be getting one enchanted card in, in a case, right? You could buy individual boxes and either get, you know, lucky like we did and get three of them in 20 open packs, or you end up buying. 20 boxes and get no enchanted right if they're if they're cracked open and the uh, cheapest you know, enchanted yeah. card out of into the ink lands right now is a hundred and oh pardon 92 dollars that's the cheapest enchanted one and then so, you got uh, again your, yeah th this is you know it, it's a fun product to open yeah um it, it's 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 i enjoy it i i think it was a home run gift from from sherry vegas i enjoyed the experience of cracking them open i wish we could play but you know she's not a big player um <clears throat> she she prefers her world of warcraft um but I, I hope to eventually as the game grows have more and more people willing and we do have a game group and i'll probably introduce them to it and maybe even drafting speaking um, of world warcraft, uh there's another expansion coming out right I don't really understand how they're doing that. I'd have to have Miss Sherry Vegas comment on exactly what's going on in that uh, vein. Wait, we haven't really talked about much on, on the video game front today. But uh, while we're at it, since we're about to wrap up here, why don't we wrap, why don't we wrap it up with a, a, an exclusive product to Cardboard Conversations. That's right. It's time for Sleeve, Shred, or Sell. So let's go ahead. I've got three cards here let's go ahead get those up make yourself big you don't need to see me there we go oh interesting why don't we go ahead and read these because i'm honestly not all that familiar with these so you have a better voice um, than me. i've got a cool the unrepentant two black two red you get a five five legendary scorpion dragon rogue comes in oh, he's got not one. what's that it's an outlaw. It's an outlaw. It's got flying. It's got trample. Also, it's if you sacrifice trample. three other creatures, you could put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery, only once per turn. So you're getting a little bit capped right there. We've also got Kellen the Kid. Green, white, and blue for a 3-3 legendary human fairy rogue. Flying, lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may cast a permanent with equal or lesser mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you may put a land onto the battlefield. Not tapped, not once per turn. And then you've got Gered, Mirror of the Wilds. A red, a green, and a white for a 3-3 legendary human shaman with haste. Non-token creatures you control have tap, Create a token that's a copy of target token under your control that enter the battlefield this turn. 
Ooh, lots of words on these ones. And yes, Solar God, I think you're right. Kellen the Kid does, in fact, have a halo sword. All right, so are you going to put up our... Uh our uh choices here this is this is audience participation <laughs> benson why would you wish that on me that's a terrible idea terrible terrible and we've got a poll live now so which of these cards do you want to sleeve which one of these are you going to keep up and make a deck around Ooh. And that's so one of the one things is, is I chose up. all legendary creatures. So all of these they could be, be made up to have their own decks. Yeah. You know, I, it was funny because if I was going to be all of these, the, the, the sleeves sh sell shred uh, guy tonight, I was also going to pick commanders. Um, And I guess I'll say that for maybe, maybe I'll do it next week. Which one am I going to sleeve? Hmm. Well, we're going to have to be the tiebreakers. So let's get those votes in there, folks. Wake up. If we're in the background, just, yeah, you know, on, take a on. half a second to vote on which one of you, which one are you putting into a sleeve and adding to your collection? Well, I mean, Benson, vote, buddy, vote. Help us out. Help Do us both. out. YouTube loves interaction. Vote. Whoa, whoa, Hit come that, on. Smash that like button. Kellen's super cool. Look how, how slick that guy looks. He's got a hat. He's... <laughs> actually well, okay all so actually have hats yeah i was gonna say that's tonight's secret theme is everybody has <laughs> head coverings <laughs> who has the best hat yeah oh my god jesus okay so that's something we have to do for our next sleeve cell shred is all hats edition and we're voting for who has the best hat and not the best uh, card uh, actually what i think we should do is there needs to be like a secret uh thing secret theme and they have to guess the secret theme oh dude okay yes yes that is good kind of like a where's waldo um so but there's so only Benson one of these that is that, not um, an outlaw so what do we got here for the a little bit more juice to it you know uh oh and we've I got a tie right. is anybody gonna break the tie out there we've got we've got a tie for which one oh gets it's shifting kept. around Oh, it just shifted again. Oh, we got so many oh, votes coming around. around. Got movement. Here we go. A dragon with a cowboy hat. It's a scorpion dragon rogue. I mean, come on, coach. It's it can be anything it wants to be. That's the thing about the world nowadays. All right. So there we go. Let's lock it in. So it looks like the card that everybody agrees to keep out there is going to be Kellen the Kid. All right. So whenever you cast the spell from anywhere other than your hand, we're talking about exile we're talking about um oh what's the plot mechanic the the uh the the uh what's the one from i keep forgetting about it the the one from uh what was it kamigawa where it's um not uh what is it called when you foretell no not foretell, foretell. that's it yeah foretell. Yeah. So all and of then, those those yeah. mechanics that put them outside of it or if you're casting it from somebody else's um you know, yeah. like your 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 uh, boy in white, blue, green. What could you do that with? Like that's usually like a black or red mechanic, right? If you're casting it from uh, somebody else's uh, deck or hand or graveyard, like white, blue, green. What I mean, like just not the right colors for that. But okay, if you, I mean, those are my colors. But I think that's one um, of the things about it is you're gonna have to work to make it work. But I think if you can figure out how to get it going, that it's definitely going to be able to combo out. All right, let's go ahead and let's, you know, like we traditionally put up the which one are you going to shred, folks? Which one hits the bin? Um, Get some votes in there. We want to try to wrap up the show and let you all get on with your Saturday evening. Um, appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Thank you so very much. If you haven't smacked that like or subscribe or spread around, the love about cardboard conversations and like what we have to say to you folks, please do that for us. Please help us grow the channel. And if you're even more into what we say, you know, we do have channel memberships that we're trying to add value for all of you out there that would be kind enough to donate, give us money for what we do here. Um, I like it. I like it. Fight. 
<laughs> hey man you know um, hey, i'm working on it doing what we can i like it i dig it i dig it so who who's hitting the bin we only have three votes folks come on push those buttons get involved here speak your mind because poor garad like he's just getting shredded he's he's heading for the bin wow he's taking his boars and he's going to snores i got nothing there doing what we can uh, Garrett, he's just getting whipped non-token that is green, green get whipped. Whipped. it's a copy of target token you control to enter the battlefield i i just can't even think of a deck that i would want to put this in like at all like there's just i don't blame the audience so i think we're just gonna go ahead and 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 oh, gee, very good bad, bad. put that comment you, up they you nailed right. it it's, uh, yeah, Very, I think I had to had a great take out of Go check out his channel. Things. You know, I think that a cool does have a little bit of draw to it. It's interesting. Um, you know, for a black and red deck, it's coming out, it's strong. You know, turn four, you're getting a five-five flying trampler. That alone is legendary effect, you know. And then sacrificing other stuff, you're playing into the style. I think that Benson says it well. Gered is boring, and that's why four out of our uh, votes, 100%, say to shred Gered. So that means we are keeping Kellen selling a cool, but uh, actually, so what What was your vote? Which one were you keeping? So I got to say, I wanted to make a deck around Kellen. I think it would be interesting, but as we've talked over it a little bit here, I think in a cool deck would be pretty cool to make up. I I agree. Um, in, in all honesty, a cool. I, I already automatically started thinking about it. Like that. What's that zombie that comes out, or, or you know that that if there if you don't have one at the end of your turn, make an, make a zombie with um with decay, one, you know, like it dies, decay, yeah. whatever it's called. So yeah. you got two creatures on, like basically turn two, you pop a, a like a two casting cost goblin onto the board that procreates another goblin. I think there's some three casting cost ones that'll like make a copy of a go, you know, like put a goblin one one goblin token or two one one goblin tokens. There's like so that's where you know like the direction I'm going. So like by turn three, you can easily get a cool to repentant onto the board, right? That that's an easy thing to do, um, and and then you just sack you know two goblins and a zombie and you could drop, you know, blight steel Colossus on the board. Oh, absolutely. That's one of the on interesting three. things about this is like how well paired it goes with other big nasties. I could see this being almost like a Kalia of the vast kind of level of shenanigans and power. And one of the worst experiences I've ever had playing magic, the gathering, even in person or not, was against the Kalia deck. And this is that that same level of good, you know? And being able to have a sacrifice outlet, that's solid. And on three creatures, even better. This is this is good. I can see this being solid. Oh, I, I agree with you, Benson. And I, I like the Vile Smasher. I, I said it right now. I've said it before. Um, it's one of my favorite cards coming out of Outlaws. Um, I like the, I, you know, I like the white instant board wipe. I think that's also a very good card. Drop a I don't hate board wipe people. as much as other people do because you only hate it when other people beat you to the punch and, you know, poorly time it for your board state. But think about this one, right? So what are they going to do? Nuke, nuke a, 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 a zombie to keep you from getting, like, you see this across from you. You better expect it. They've got some really nasty shit about to hit the board. Uh, you know, um, so uh, again, you know, it, it's it's one of those things that just puts out big nasty uglies, and Black's got tons of them. What's the one that comes out and they, you know, like you, they have to sacrifice as soon as it hits the board at the one from Modern Horizons two, big nasty flyer. So you know, seeing that coming at you on like turn three, that's just you know gross. Or how about Terror of the Peaks? You know, uh, which it'd be kind of a waste for for the mana curve, but. Again, there's just so many combinations of things that you don't want to see coming at you uh, this early in a game. And this guy, if he's your commander, it's going to keep coming at you, right? Um, yeah, I mean, realistically, turn three, you can have that effect occur. Sure. 
So, it, it, you know, it, it quickly it's going to get out of hand for this this kind of deck. I, I don't see this in a non-aggressive deck. This definitely has to be an aggro deck. Um, oh, this deck Master makes you deck. Yeah, you're you're instantly the problem when this starts. By turn five, you're an issue. Yeah, and oh, that, yeah. that's one of the things. It's like looking at the art on this card says you're a fucking problem, man. It oh, yeah. should be badass. So people wanted to sell this, though. I wanted to keep the Kellen. I just can you bring Kellen back up because I just don't understand how this is possibly going to be all that great outside of plot and foretell. Like, just I don't, I don't understand. Like, what in any of those three colors lets you play? Like ex exile cards. Itali, maybe? The red, I guess. So I I, I just don't understand how that's oh not Itali because it's not red. So I don't know. Like blue? Does blue let you exile? Like yeah. I don't know. Or tell yeah, there's definitely some blue cards that are gonna let you exile stuff. And then, uh, I want to say there's even a little that, bit like, in white. Maybe but, there's but, some like, stuff from Outlaws that I just haven't looked into. Uh, just because, again, you know, this goes back to the rapidity of releases here. The, the quickness that they're giving us new cards, even as content creators. 100% clarity. If it was not for Matt making all of his shorts about what's coming out i wouldn't know what fucking cards are new like oh uh, yeah i i can't keep up like i tried but that's so just much. tiring even for a content creator to try to keep up with with you know the the release pace i think that that's bad for the game in all honesty um i hope they slow it down for people to be able to savor some of the sets i like the pace that 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 Lorcan is coming out. I think four a year is appropriate. I think sorcery is a bit slow, aren't they? Like one a year? They're one um, a year, and they also don't seem to make enough of the product for the purchase. Cool. I can't imagine that they could be making bank enough to like th that. Just seems troublesome for a business model. If it's a dude out of his garage, cool. But anything was, outside I, of that, I didn't I just want can't to say it, it, but I'm glad you did because that was the thought. Was some dude in his garage that has like a really fancy printer and is getting like pallets of cardstock delivered to his like suburban driveway and is just making this out of his like duplex. I, 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 I don't even know what to say to that. It, it is. Yeah, what it is. I think Benson, you know, as great as Rudy has been, you know, for the entertainment factor, I think that his influence has definitely been an issue with different TCGs across the board. You know, I I don't always think it's been the best influence either. Yeah, it is what it is. I don't even want to speak to Rudy. I agree with Sherry Vegas that you know I shouldn't I shouldn't talk too much about other people unless I have a very specific point to make about them. But um, you know, I I think that that back to this point, I, I think that Kellen will be a very difficult commander to build design. around. What? Right, I, I think that Kellen is going to be a very narrow deck. I'm glad that it has a perpetual. If you don't, you may put a land card from your play onto the battlefield. But how many times do you really have excess land sitting in your hand that's going to trigger maybe twice, three times a game? Well, uh, if, also, if you know, you still have to be able to get the trigger in the first place, casting a spell from no. anywhere other than your hand. So, no, like, no, no, because it says if you don't. Oh, I guess that that ha that has to meet that. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know, dude. I think that uh, cool the unrepentant is going to be far more. It, you'll see many different builds based on that, and um, I think that that'll be far easier to make it trigger, and it could be just as impactful as, if not more so, than than the Kellen trigger. Right. I think you yeah. have to jump oh, through yeah, too many hoops for for Kellen. You know, pushing games forward at as a presence at the table, a cool the unrepentant is definitely going to make things happen more than Kellen the kid seems like it's going. Yeah, to Yeah, seeing Kellen on the battlefield, I wouldn't go like, "Oh, got to kill that thing." I see a cool the unrepentant on the board. I'm going like, "That thing must die." Yeah, I'm removing that as often as I can. 
Kellen's power looks very much six, whereas a cool looks like it could definitely get up to an eight, even higher. I mean, I could see that. Oh, man, I could see a cool getting up to an eight for sure in power easily, like by my hand. You know, it, I'm much just saying I, I it immediately triggers many more things that pop off like, OK, how do I make his thing more? beneficial like playing him with life uh are you familiar with the card lifeline not particularly okay can we go ahead and look that up that's probably he's probably one of the reasons why it's gone back up uh this month i, I saw that on a chart somewhere and i'm like oh because i have a few copies of it the og one i love lifeline um it's a great card what it does is any any cards that hit the the, the graveyard at the end of the, uh, any creature cards that hit the graveyard End of turn, <laughs> return them to the battlefield. Five colorless artifact. Whenever a creature is put in a gra graveyard and a creature is in play, return that creature from your graveyard to play at end of turn. Oh, man. And it's not even like your turn either. That's, that's everybody. One of the great things there. about these old cards is like how they're worded is just made for a different format than they're going to be used in I so i put this by the way in all my group hugs for commander raids damaged i would the 38 cents that's what i'm looking at like that as i was going through some of my collection and shit today it's like wait i don't want cards like i don't care what they're worth really because they're play pieces to me Everything's going to shit. So, man, this is just an interesting card. Yeah. Can you see how it's useful in Commander Raids? Oh, absolutely. It, when it, it, when, and a creature is in play. So it doesn't matter whose creature. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. They just rolled and made a bunch of defenders, which normally I would groan at. But now it's actually the saving grace because I can put that stuff back on the battlefield that you just killed. Ah, sucker. And his can't ever come back to the battlefield. Why? Because they tokens. Right. So and, and there's also many effects in commander raids that you sacrifice the highest CMC. Well, OK, cool. And now it reenters the battlefield. So any ETB effects trigger again. This looks interesting. <laughs> so combine that with a cool. Sure. <laughs> I'll attack. Yeah. I'll sack all, all my creatures. Um, put this big thing into play. Oh, and in turn, bring all my stuff I sacked back. Well, and a cool specifically says sacrifice three other creatures. So it can't even be him. It. So well, but it doesn't even have to be like, just him on the battlefield. Like if all any if your opponent has other creatures, right? Yeah. So there's you know a couple of safety barriers. More like oh, uh, cool. Yeah. So I bet if people could re-vote again, they'd keep him. I'm just I say, saying. Number one, I can't vote because I'm the one hosting the stream, so that's a thing. But I think my personal opinion has definitely changed upon further uh, reflection and conversation with other people including the audience so thank you again for everybody uh that's been hanging out and talking with us you know if it wasn't for you guys yeah thank you very much everybody for showing up participating we love you as always and hope uh, to see you again here um next weekend um uh, same time same bat place thank you so much everybody for all your support love you you can't see it but i'm dancing